Uh, we're going to go to Joan Whitman, uh, who we have um, online, I believe. Ms. Whitman, welcome to the Judiciary Committee. Chair Lads and members of the committee, I'm Joan Whitman. I live in St. Paul. Thank you for the opportunity to tell my equity story remotely. I've waited a very long time for this moment, so I don't want COVID to stop me from testifying to you today. A justice issue that I care deeply about and that touches me personally is the Equal Rights Amendment. My gender equity story covers a span of over 80 years that addresses almost a lifelong interest and commitment for enactment of the Equal Rights Amendment, commonly known as the ERA. The original wording of the ERA was just 14 words. Equality under the law shall not be abridged or denied on account of gender. The 2023-24 bills, both national and state, have added additional words to name those who are included and protected. I grew up on a farm in the 30s and 40s between two brothers. When I, was a, I remember when I was around eight years old, one of our cows was about to give birth and I told my dad I wanted to see the baby calf being born. I was told that's not appropriate for girls, but it was okay for my brother who was 10. Going to Catholic grade school, I wanted to be an altar server. This was in the early 40s. I knew the Latin responses better than my older brother, but I couldn't be a server because I was a girl. After college, I was a primary teacher. And after I married, this was in the late 50s, and was pregnant, I couldn't teach. Not because I wasn't qualified, but because of rules that pregnant women were physically unfit. But the unsaid belief was that pregnant women would be a scandal to the students. If you were pregnant and didn't disclose, you risked losing your teaching license. Male teachers were paid a higher salary. Another inequity of those times was I could not get a credit card or a loan in my own name. When I was ready to buy a car, my dad had to be the signer. When Wayne, my husband, and I bought our first house, only Wayne's name was listed as owner. These are just some of my personal experiences for why I believe we still so need the ERA. I'm sure you could add to this list. <laughs> Today, many of the experiences I had in those earlier years have been addressed, but still the 2020 gender pay gap report shows income disparities where women earn 82% of what men make for doing the same work. With our current Supreme Court and with their reversal after 50 years of the Dobbs Amendment, I fear women's rights are again endangered. Opponents will argue that women are already protected by law. Yes, that's somewhat true, but laws are easy, can easily be changed. It's much more difficult to change an amendment. We still have work to do. Women are half the world's population but we do not have equal rights. I was 92, February 23rd. My time is running out. My dream before I leave this planet is to see the ERA included in our own Minnesota Constitution and for it to be enacted in our U.S. Constitution. Yes. Let's get a question for Minnesota vo voters for or against, including the Equal, equal Rights Amendment in our Minnesota Constitution on the November 2024 ballot. Thank you for listening. I ask for your support of Senate File 37. Thank you for your testimony, Ms. Whitman, and uh, best wishes for good health as well. Mm -hmm. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate your being here. 